Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at secret console emulation. I often get questions about this so from now on I'm going to redirect those questions to this video. And you can also redirect people to this video as well if they're having problems with secret console emulation. In this video I am using the Retroid Pocket 5 but feel free to use any Android device you may have as you can use a lot of the same features. When it comes to emulating the secret console on Android you have a few different apps you can choose from. There's Yuzu, Citroen, Sadachi, Suyu, and some more. I personally use Yuzu, and I will go through exactly how I have things set up in a moment, but for now I'm going to jump into one of the other ones to show you how to set it up. This is Sudachi, one of the emulators that we can use, and I'm going to run you through the starting guide, and you should be able to take what I do here and use it in any of the other emulators you come across. The only one that's a little bit different is Citroen, which does require you to extract some files, but I have covered that in a previous video. So opening the app, we get this nice welcome screen. Let's tap the get started button. It will then ask permissions for notifications. You can choose to turn this on if you wish. In my experience, you don't really get any notifications, so it doesn't really matter if you grant this or not. I will just grant the permissions anyway. And then this is the important step. You need to select your prod.keys file. I cannot tell you where to get one of these, but if you search around on the internet, I'm sure you can find one by yourself pretty easily. It will open your file manager. You need to navigate to where your prod.keys file is and just simply tap on it. Next, it will ask you where your games are located. So we're going to tap this add games button and navigate to where you have your game files. Once you find the folder that contains all of your games, choose use this folder, allow. Then it will ask if you want to deep scan. If you don't check this box, it's only going to look for game files inside the one folder you've chosen. If you enable deep scan, it will look for games inside folders, inside folders. Maybe you might have some games in a folder, in another folder, in which case you're going to want to check deep scan. And I would suggest checking this box anyway. So after checking the deep scan box, let's press OK. And then we are done. We've imported our prod.keys file and our games. Now we can choose continue and it's going to start populating the game list. Now you can feel free to jump into some games here, but I would suggest making a couple of changes first for the best experience. So we're going to hit the settings cog at the top left and under GPU driver manager, tap this and tap the plus button to add a different driver. Feel free to test out the stock one and see how it goes. But in my experience for the Retro Pocket 5, I highly urge everybody to use the 9v2 turnip driver. I will include a link to this in the description of this video. And it's also in the resources section in my Discord channel. So feel free to check that out. So let's tap the install button. And I've navigated to my download folder where I have the 9v2 driver here, turnip 24.3.0 R9v2. So let's tap that zip file. There's no need to extract it. And you will see it's loaded here. And here we can freely choose which driver we want to use for our emulator. So I would highly suggest using 9v2. If a particular game doesn't like the driver, you can change this on a per game basis, which I'll show you in a minute. So after selecting 9v2, let's go back out of here and let's make another change. Many games when emulating the secret console have audio problems, glitches, freezing, or maybe just no audio at all. So in order to fix that, we're going to go to advanced settings, audio, and then we're going to change the output engine from auto to cubeb. And in my experience, this fixes audio issues in every game. So make sure your output engine is set to cubeb. Let's back out of this. And here we have another choice we can make, which is under system, you can choose if you want to use docked mode. Docked mode will change the resolution of games from 720p up to 1080p. Again, we can change this on a per game basis. So this is really what you want the default to be for all games. I personally leave this turned off and run all games at 720p. Then if a game seems to be running very easily on the Retro Pocket 5, I enable docked mode on that particular game to up it to 1080p. So I would suggest turning this off, but feel free to do what makes you happy. Let's back out of this. And that is really all of the settings we really need to change. We just need to make sure we change our driver to turnip 9v2 and our audio to cubeb. 
One other setting you might want to turn on is asynchronous shaders, which does help some games to run. So under the advanced settings and graphics, scroll down until you see all of these little toggle boxes and find this one that says use asynchronous shaders. I usually leave this turned on by default, but once again, feel free to experiment with this and turn it on or off on a per game basis and see which works best for you. One tool I recommend downloading is the NSC Builder. I will link this in the description. This tool lets you combine games and their updates and DLC into one file, which you can keep on the external SD card and you don't need to fill up your internal storage with all those updates and DLCs. So if we go over here to where it says releases and click on the latest release, scroll down right to the bottom where it says assets and choose either the x64 or x86 version. If you don't know which version is right for your system, you probably want to get x64, as most modern computers are using that. So click on that zip file to download it. When it downloads, you're going to want to extract it. You can just choose extract all up here or right click and choose extract all in the right click menu. Choose a place to extract it to and then open the folder. It might look a bit scary with so many odd looking files, but the only one we need is this NSCB file. So double click that and it will open a similarly scary looking window, but it's very easy to use. All we're going to need to do here is choose multi-pack mode. So we're going to choose input two. So simply push the number two on your keyboard and then the enter key. If we look at the capital letters at the bottom of the window, it will say, please drag a file or folder over the window and press enter. So here we're going to grab our NSP files for the secret console and drag them onto this window. So in this folder, I put a couple of cuphead files. Here is a tip, by the way, if you have two files, one of them may say update like in this case, but in some cases they don't say anything. It's just a series of codes. And if you want to know which one is the game and which one is the update, if you're installing it manually within the emulator itself, then look at the end of the code. The base game will end with 000, and the update will end with 800. So if you see 800, that's the update, 000 is the base game. What we're going to do now is simply grab these two files and drag them into the NSC Builder window. I'm not sure if you can just grab all the files at once. You possibly can, but just to be safe, I'm going to drag them one by one. So let's grab the base game file and drag it into the NSCB window. All that does is just paste the path where the file is, and you can then simply press enter as it says. After doing that, you then want to do the same thing with the updates and DLCs you have for the game. So I'm now going to grab the update and drag that into the window as well. Once again, it will paste the file path. And then I'm going to press enter one more time. Now that I've dragged all of the files I need into the window, we can now look through the options we have here. And what we want to do is start processing the current list of games. So to do that, we're going to input number one down here. And then once again, we're going to push enter on the keyboard. We now have some choices of how we want to join the games together. And what I've found so far has the best chance of working is to choose number two and repack these NSP files into XCI files. Now there is a chance this is not going to work. So please don't just go and delete your original files. Keep a backup in case it doesn't work properly. But in my experience, taking NSP files and converting them into an XCI file has worked every single time. So let's once again input number two and push enter. It now asks if you want to patch the required system version. I always say no, which I do by pushing zero and then enter. And then finally we have now, what do you want to do? We want to merge these files into one single file. So we're going to input the number one to merge them all together. So let's do that now, one, enter. And that is the final step and it will now merge the files together. We get a really nice little progress bar as it's going along and it doesn't really take too long at all. It's now finished and we can input number zero to go back and do another file, or we can input number one to just exit NSC Builder. Now that may have looked like a lot of steps, but once you get the muscle memory down, it's actually incredibly easy. So let me just go back and do it one more time. So here we are at the beginning. We're going to choose two, drag in our game file, push enter, drag in our update, push enter. Then we're going to choose number one and then number two. Then we're going to choose zero and number one, 
And now we're processing another game. If you have a lot of games to go through and you start getting the knack of which buttons to push in which order, you can do this really quickly. It's one of those things that looks very daunting at first, but after just trying it a few times, it gets pretty easy. And if you get stuck at any point, feel free to come back to this video and watch how I did it once again. So that is how to combine your NSP files into one single XCI file and save your internal storage. So now that we're in our games list, we have everything loaded up, we're ready to jump into some games. And if we now tap on any game to launch it, it's going to use our default settings, which in my case is 720p with a Turnip 9v2 driver and Cubeb Audio Engine. In my testing that I've been doing over the past couple of months, that has worked brilliantly for pretty much every game I've wanted to run, except some of the titles such as FC25, which unfortunately just don't run right now. So let's jump into Golf Story, for example, and it's going to use those settings that we selected earlier. On first launch, you'll probably see this on-screen control pad, which we don't want to use as we have our own control pad here. So by swiping in from the left, you will bring up settings for the game you're running. To turn off the gamepad overlay, let's go to overlay options. Let's scroll down and let's untick show overlay, which will turn all of the overlay off, except for the little frame per second counter at the top left. If you want to keep that on the screen, feel free. But if you would like to turn that off and have a super clean screen, once again, swipe in from the left, bring up the overlay options and then turn off the FPS counter. And those changes will apply to every game. That is an emulator setting. So now every game you play from here on out will not have any overlays. You can see this game is running absolutely perfectly because this is quite an easy game to run. You can feel free to change the A and B buttons depending on your preference by swiping down from the top of the screen on the Retroid Pocket 5 and changing the control style between Xbox or Retro. Personally, I like Retro on small devices and Xbox on big devices. So for this console, I do have this as my select button. So let's use this to hit a shot. And while my golf skills aren't very good, you'll see the game is running beautifully. If a game was not running particularly well and you wanted to try out a different driver, you can hold your finger down on the game for a second or so and it will bring up the per game settings. Here you can back up your save files, import save files, clear cache, here we can change the GPU driver to any of the ones you've installed. So this game, for example, might run better with the default driver or another one that you found online. So feel free to change it here. You can also go into settings up here and you get all of the same settings we saw in the main menu. So going into system, you can turn on docked mode to now make that game run at 1080p. And it's also here under add-ons where you can manually add DLC and game updates. So if you didn't update the game using the build that I showed earlier, you can do it here by tapping install, updates and DLC, okay. And then here you can go and find your update file and it will install. The problem with doing that is you can only install it to the internal storage of the device, not to an external SD card. And you will find your storage filling up very quickly this way, which is why I advise you to try combining the files and keeping them all on external storage. If you'd like to set up a second controller for one of these games, make sure you've connected it to your device. So here, scrolling down from the top, you can see I have connected this via Bluetooth here. Once again, we can swipe in from the left side of the screen. And here we can see controls. So let's tap on that. Again, you can access this from the main settings of the emulator too. You will see a little gamepad icon next to player one, which is the built-in gamepad controls of your device. And you will see these gamepad icons for other players have a slash through them indicating that they're not connected. So make sure your gamepad is connected to your device. You can see here, I'm connected to Bluetooth here. And now to set up this controller, just simply tap player two, check this little toggle box, which enables a second gamepad. Controller type lets you choose what kind of controller you're connecting. I would suggest using the Pro Controller. There was a game or two that only recognized Joy-Cons, so I did have to set it to dual Joy-Cons, but I would suggest going for Pro Controller first and seeing how that goes. So I'll choose Pro Controller, and thankfully, connecting any gamepad to the emulator is automatic. So you simply need to choose Auto Map a Controller, and then choose which controller you'd like to set up the inputs for. So in this case, I'm setting up my 8-bit DO SN30 Pro. So I will choose that one and it will automatically set up all the controls for me. And scrolling down here, you'll see they are all assigned different functions. So now we can back out of this, get back into our game. And now when we go to play a game, you can see the Retroid Pocket 5 is controlling this side of the screen. 
and my 8-bit though controller is controlling this side of the screen. And here is a little editor's note here. I did have to set this to dual Joy-Cons. So I believe this is the game I was remembering that didn't work when it was set to Pro Controller. So I simply swiped in from the left, went to Controls, Player 2, and I changed the controller type to dual Joy-Cons. So you may need to play around with this setting a little bit, but you should be able to get it working. So that's how to set up two controllers in the secret console. If you're playing a game and it cannot run well, maybe it's too demanding for whatever system you have, you can lower the resolution to give it a better chance of working. And then you can add sharpening after the fact to still make it look pretty good. So let's say for example, Assassin's Creed is too demanding for your device and it cannot run well. What you can do is hold your finger down on it, go to settings. First of all, go to system settings and make sure that docked mode is unchecked so that you're running at 720p rather than 1080p, as that will give you a better chance of running the game. Then go back to graphic settings, and here where you see resolution, which is automatically set to one times, you can try lowering this to 0.75 or even 0.5 times resolution, which will make the graphics look worse, but might give you a working game. And what's nice about the emulator is it will let you know you've changed something from the default and allow you to very quickly revert back to default settings without having to memorize all of your settings or reset everything. So you'll see after I change this resolution setting, it says here, use global setting. And you will see that on any setting that I change, it will say, use global setting. And by hitting that button, it will change only that setting back to default, which is a really nice feature. So here I've put the resolution all the way down to 0.5 times, and you'll probably find that the graphics are not very nice that way. So in order to counteract that, we can use window adapting filters and sharpness. What I like to do is change the window adapting filter to AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. I find this gives quite a nice sharpening effect, and you don't notice the quality dip quite so much. Also make sure you enable asynchronous shaders as that gives you a better chance of running some games. You can play around with all the settings here, but resolution in particular will give you a better chance of running many games. So I suggest playing around with that one first. And if you need any more support or want to know the best settings to use to get games running, check out my Discord and compatibility spreadsheet in the link below. Our Discord server actually just hit 1,000 members, so congratulations to this lucky so-and-so for being number 1,000. You may find that some games just simply don't work, and that will likely come down to the hardware that you're using. So for me personally, with this Retroid Pocket 5, most of the games here run very well, but there are some such as EA FC 25 that doesn't open, Assassin's Creed runs very slowly, The Witcher 3 is another one I cannot get a good frame rate on. You just have to work with what you have. But I hope this video was helpful in getting you started with secret console emulation and fixed some of the issues you may have had with audio, crashing, glitching, or anything else. If this video was helpful, please give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already. If you'd like to pick up your own Retroid Pocket 5, check out the official Retroid website in the description with my affiliate link, and I'll see you again tomorrow for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.